Well, greetings and welcome to DTLT today. Hello. How's it going, Andy? Welcome. Uh, it's going good. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have a uh, a friend here with us. <laughs> um, our so, big toe has gone missing again. Again. Um, apparently, he's up in the New York City vicinity. Yeah. He's, um, he's occupying something. I think he's. I'm not sure if it's Wall Street yeah, or he's the pizza. Some pizza place down. <laughs> pizza place down, down there. In Greenwich Village. Um, so we we kind of had to have something to represent uh, the the big toe yeah. on our show today. So it's appropriate. It's a good look for him, actually. <laughs> I think we should outfit him this way yeah. as soon as he comes back. And uh, I do love the pink sunglasses. Yeah. And you're on your iPad. This is day two. <laughs> yeah. Three. I've lost count already. Um, well, I'm sure maybe you have. As yeah. Well. It was. It was. I guess two shows ago or whatever that that the uh, we tried to get the mac integrated into the show and it died on us so um i am using my ipad to try to keep up um now here's it, what i'm interested in so you've been using your ipad pretty much as your sole computing device and a lot of people that will say oh you know an ipad is as good as a laptop do you feel that way at this point or are you about ready to break no there's i mean i really i the thing that i liked about the ipad is the mail client and it does a lot of sure what I l like to do and I can view threads and that sort of thing but it isn't quite the full mail client mm -hmm. that especially the lion mail client that's out there that I've been using so right. um, it's a little bit tough I've been like I needed to go back and search for other emails to try to, to get, get previous conversations from months back and right. it hasn't been easy yeah. um, and obviously other things like you know using any kind of creative software right now I'm working on another project where I'm working on another computer, yeah. Um, so that hasn't been a real issue, but uh, it would be nice to have a regular, uh, even a laptop, yeah. <laughs> come in soon. <laughs> so if anybody has any influence yeah. out there, all, all our sponsors that we're going to contact after <laughs> yeah. this to get a hit us up. Exactly. Um, so and, what are we talking about today, Tim? Well, and Besides a, speaking the of, absence of Jim Groom and the absence of my MacBook Pro, well, what Andy, are we talking about? Let's talk about something that's actually present. Well, Andy, you know, it's interesting. You were talking about doing creative projects, and I think that's a perfect segue into what um, we were going to talk about. You know, we do some interesting stuff here on DTLT today, and it's sort of become like a pet hobby of mine to make, you know, creative things with it. That intro that you just saw was something that I did, the audio for it. And often when you go into a creative project, there seems to be, you know, several elements to it you know you've got whatever audio that you're going to use um, whether it be from the video or something separate from it um, you know the visual aspect of it um, typography and fonts that you can use and we cover some of this stuff we do a, a, a stuff for starving students right. each year where we um, for the students who come in to where we talk about some of this kind of stuff and I thought it would be helpful to you know we we always try to go towards the free route and the the free stuff is good the mm -hmm. open source and you know there's a lot of stuff you can find on like freesound.org and some other websites like that uh, but we often uh, forget about the things that cost money but they don't cost too much money one of the things that I'm thinking of in terms of like stock photography uh, that was a really big player I don't know if they still are too much but I stock photo right which you know, when they came onto the game it was like here's these amazing stock stock photographs that you can use and it's like a dollar for yeah. a low res one and a high res one was like three dollars and so it, all of a sudden it was like you could use really high quality work for that yeah it's it, it reminds me again of the kind of the appification mm -hmm. for lack of a better term yeah um of, of some of these resources um and i i never i never really did get into the stock photo kind of Thing. Mm -hmm. I know I knew iStock Photo was was there, um, but I've always just tried to whenever I could use use a Flickr photo. Yeah. Um, try to get Creative Commons, and then in other cases, just kind of use, you know, the the, the old fashioned me method of contacting people and asking permission. Right. Um, it goes a long way, especially it, it in education. Does. Well, absolutely, and 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 I sometimes I follow it to the nth degree just to make sure. 
Um, it, a, an example is the digital media cookbook site that, that mm -hmm. I need to get back to and, and update. But um, I did have to contact somebody who hadn't turned on the Creative Commons, you know, idea or, or actually no they turned on the creative commons but they didn't have the the ability to kind of modify right the the thing the photograph so i just i wanted to make sure so i contacted them and they said sure have at it yeah you know uh, appreciate that you, you're doing that and then they looked back at the site and they said you know um, you know i'm happy with with this being used in this way so um you know contacting people is is a is a good method of getting these resources but mm -hmm. uh um, what, so, so tell us some of the places that that uh, are your favorites. Well, so th one place that I go to a lot for things that I'm looking at is a place called Envato, and it's E N V A T O, um, and it's a whole marketplace. I'll pull up their website here so you can see uh, they've got a lot of different web properties, and this is sort of a landing page for their stuff. So they've got their marketplaces where you can buy everything from like WordPress themes. There's premium themes on there. Uh, background music for projects, uh, After Effects project files, and even Flash templates, which aren't used too much, but I can show you an example of um, one place where I've actually found a good use for a Flash template. Mm -hmm. uh, these are also the same people that own the Toots Plus network, so they do tutorials for yeah. Photoshop, for, um, gosh, JavaScript and uh, .NET tutorials and all kinds of different um, de web development, audio production tutorials, um, even iPhone development, they've got stuff on there too. Okay. So um, they own all of that network. Um, and I'll pull over here. So this is one called ThemeForest.net. And premium WordPress themes have become a, a much larger thing in the past several years as WordPress has expanded mm -hmm. to become more of a content management system. Uh, so this is a great place to go if you look at the regular WordPress themes and, uh, and templates and you're like, eh, I'm not really feeling that. Yeah. Uh, and you want something that's a little bit more customized, a little bit more complex, I can tell you the dtlttoday.com uh, website. I went right here to themeforest.net and started looking at really good motion and video uh, project type sites. And that was one called Motion Picture from a developer called, called Obox. Okay. So I was able to find it on here and I think it was $17. Yeah. You know? Once upon a time, um, I, and, I, and I looked at Theme Forest and kind of longingly looked at some of their designs. Mm. Um, it was probably the 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 voice in the to the side of me um, by, by the name of Jim Groom, who kind of <laughs> said, you know, why would you want to pay for a WordPress theme when there's so many, you know, that sort of thing, and and you can you can modify them and change the CSS and and so forth. But um, theme, theme Forest specifically, though, was a was a very attractive site to me and. Um, I, what I did, I think, eventually was just kind of look for themes that that could be modified to look like kind of like a theme for us. But sure. um, but as you say, you know, it's 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 a very inexpensive way to go mm -hmm. um, to get some really good customization. Well, um, and you know, what's nice about it is that they break down like. Um, so I was searching on here for when you go under WordPress, they've got so they've got the regular blog stuff, and I think you can probably find a free blog theme that's fairly good on the web. I don't I wouldn't necessarily feel a need to pay for a standard blog theme. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they also get into creative sites, corporate, retail, technology. I went here under entertainment and I always like to order it by how many sales they've had uh -huh. because that's usually a good indicator that exactly. something's good. Uh, and so this top one here is actually for a restaurant. And okay. it, this one's actually not cheap. It's $40. But this is so much more high quality than anything that you really see from a free WordPress theme. Sure. So, uh, you know, it's incredible the kind of stuff that they offer. And this is a WordPress theme that you can then download and use. Um, and a lot of them have a lot more customization in terms of what WordPress offers from the regular, you know, sometimes you install a theme and it's like, there it is and you mm -hmm. can use it, but there's not a whole lot of customization. Yeah. On a lot of these, there's a whole page or two of separate options, you know, different things that you can upload, different backgrounds, you know, different colors and themes. Now, do you modify them enough so that you, so that it isn't recognizable? Because one of the things that I always think about is, I wouldn't necessarily search for a theme based on the number of sales because sure. I would think, well, everybody now everybody has this else. website out here. I want mine to look, you know, it's the old car thing. It's where yeah. people want to buy the, the car that looks a little bit different than everybody else's. Um, do you... Do you customize the themes once you get them? I, I tend to in some ways, but I don't worry about it too much. You know, the internet is a large place, and the, the theme that I just pulled up, which was the most popular restaurant entertainment one, had 1,900 sales. Okay. So you can guess that 
maybe out of those, maybe th if three quarters of them were live, then you're sure. talking 1,300 websites. But the mm. internet's such a large place, sure. I don't really worry about it. Even if someone was to say, you know, maybe that's recognizable, a lot of times I find it's the content on your website that people yeah, are going to exactly. remember exactly. so much more than the actual design of it, whether that background, hey, I've seen that linen paper background before, sure. I've, I've seen that color on that font or right. that particular typeface. Well, and in, in some cases, I'm, I'm using... Um, some of the more popular websites with, as you say, like a different header, sure. and it still makes it different enough. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I still don't worry about some of the sites that I have yeah. um, looking the same. And I think you, you get to that a further step if you actually are paying for a theme. Um, you know, as little as it is, the the ten or fifteen or twenty five bucks or whatever it is, right. um, you're still getting something that also you can customize to probably change the look. You know, even even yeah. slightly to to really make it a unique looking theme. And it's worth noting that so ThemeForest has not just WordPress themes, but they also have Photoshop templates for websites. They've got email uh, HTML templates that you can use and regular old HTML websites. If you were building something and you were trying to integrate some other content management system, you could start with a bare bones website from them. Uh, and do that. Uh, another website that's really nice is Audio Jungle. So this one is where you can get royalty-free audio files, and they start at a dollar, you know. Now, is this where you got the DTLT theme music? It is. This is it the actually place is. where the DTLT theme music exists. So if you, too, want to have your television <laughs> show have the cool music that DTLT today has, go to, what's that website again, Tim? It's audiojungle.com. Excellent. Yeah. Audiojungle.com. So, and again, they, they break stuff down. So you've got music packs, you've got sound effects that you can use, okay. or sets of audio files, or you could just go into your music. So say I wanted a country western okay. audio thing. Again, I'm going to search either by sales or by ratings. Sales is going to be the biggest indicator. So the most popular one on here has been sold 62 times. I mean, okay. it's not that anyone's going to go, hey, I recognize that one in the same way that they would with like, <laughs> radio or something like that. Uh, you can play previews on here and I'll play Audio this one. Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Cool. Now do they, do they have uh, like garage loops and, and things like that? Um, let me check. As, so, as you're talking about this, I'm curious. They do. Yeah. Well, they, I don't see GarageBand in here, but they've got Cubase, Logic Pro, Pro Tools, Reason. Okay. So a couple of those more advanced programs that you use for um, okay. for uh, audio mixing and okay. looping and stuff like that. Okay. So probably musicians would be more familiar with um, those kind of files and things. Um, but yeah, so they they put their little, I guess, an audio watermark over the audio, but you can preview it and it'll just say Audio Jungle a couple times over top of that. Okay. Um, and I think of it in terms of when we, when I was working on the DTLT Today theme, it came as a pack where it was, here's the whole theme, and it was this long two-minute thing, mm -hmm. but then it broke it up into, here's like a two-second uh, two kick, yep. and here's a you know 15-second intro section. And then here's a piano break, and I could yeah. piece that all together in GarageBand and make a theme that was exactly the length that I wanted it to be, and worked out fine. Well, and that's because I, I remember you talking about that, and that's why I thought it was something that came natively with GarageBand because um, a lot of those a lot of those theme songs are, are mm -hmm. broken. Yeah, and in that case, it was it was just band. a set of um, WAV files okay. that, that came in a, a zip file okay. folder. So yeah, and you can you probably could take some of those loops that they have if they if they have a wave component to them and and you know garage bandize them because sure. there is a way to to kind of do that so yeah. um yeah i'll have to i'll have to check that out because i'm always looking for um different drum loops and yeah. that sort of thing to play around with in garage band now i mentioned flash and they've got a site called active den it, you mentioned what is it called <laughs> what is it I'm, have you have you heard of flash Boy, do people even use that? I have to go put in the Wayback Machine and yeah. think about what Flash was and well, did. I'll give you a hint. Don't look it up on there because you'll have a little <laughs> bit of an issue. It'll say something about I need some kind of player. <laughs> Maybe some sort of plug in or something on like my that. Machine. And, you know, usually I'm not going to go to Flash for much of anything these days, but one place where I did find that I needed something was we've been playing around with Wowza right. and the ability to broadcast video. Well, I wanted to find a Flash player that could record video and automatically send it to Wowza. Right. And sure enough, there was a $10 file called Webcam Recorder where mm -hmm. I could put all of the server settings on there 
and then when someone hit go, it would automatically broadcast from their webcam mm -hmm. and microphone directly to a WOWSA server. Yeah, and I think that's going to be huge when, when we're able to have the server on, on campus for, mm -hmm. for anybody to kind of do those recordings and, yeah. and get it directly uh, yeah, up I to the Yeah, I think in terms of like DS-106 TV and sure. the idea that anybody sure. anywhere could broadcast. Yeah, they don't have to use YouTube to, to get that stuff up. They can, they can have that, that little extra bit of control. Yeah. And, um, put it on on our server to, to repurpose. So. Yeah, so that was that was great. an edge case, but you know, sure. you know things like that. It, it looks like less and less people are going to that site for much of anything. I'd look, the more popular things have only had a couple sales. Okay. You know, but um, it may be useful if you have some particular edge case where HTML5 is not going to cut it just yet. Sure. I hear Flash is big in the Ukraine. Is it <laughs> these days? I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. I made that up. So, and the last thing that I want to mention, so I mentioned the intro to the um, DTLTtoday.com, and that's fairly new. We unveiled that like two weeks ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was something where I had decided I wanted to look in more to After Effects, yep. program that Adobe makes for motion graphics. Right. Uh, and they apparently there's this whole website for video clips, not regular video files, but actual template files that mm -hmm. you can put into After Effects. Right. And it's called VideoHive.net. Again, this is another one of those Envato marketplaces. Boy, you're just, you are resource rich today, Tim. <laughs> Holy cow. Or I'm a shill for Envato. You'd, you'd think <laughs> we had a sponsor here or We're, something. Uh, from what I understand, they're not a paid spokesman yeah. yet. Yeah, <laughs> we only wish, right? So. Well, so here's the thing. So I can go under here for motion graphics, mm -hmm. and I can say, show me some interesting lower thirds. Again, I'm going to order by sales here to get the good stuff. Now, are these animated lower thirds? They or? are, yeah. Okay. So After Effects is going to be all motion graphics. Okay. So they'll give you these video previews, and I can pull this one up. They'll have their little watermark over top of it. But that's an example of a lower third. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That yeah, so, you know, it's something that's just a little bit nicer than just that default stuff that you might get in Wirecast, you yeah. know. And it's dirt cheap. That lower third is $6, and it's customizable. Okay. You can put your own text in there. Uh, a lot of times you can change the colors on there by just changing an alpha key. Now, do you have to have a there. certain uh, version of After Effects? Do they, do they talk about, um, you know, having the latest version of After Effects, like 5.5 for some of these, or, or do they, uh, how backward... How far backwards can you go in terms Usually, of that? Usually, if it requires some of the newer features, they will say that in the description. Okay. If there's no, if there's no, you know, call out on there saying you, these were made with After Effects 5.0 or something like that, then you can probably assume to go back. Probably, I wouldn't go back any further than three. Okay. So After Effects, apparently, major things happen between the changes. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go back much further. And sometimes they may require some extra plugins and things. So, and they tell all that in the description. Okay. So. You know, logo stings, I can pull one of these up. These are really cool and something that I've thought about doing. Uh, I just haven't found the project yet that fits <laughs> for it, but they're so awesome. So, like, for example, this one's called the Particle Reveal. Okay. I'll go to the video preview. But it's just, you know, stuff like that's kind of cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's got a bunch of different ones. We see DTLT today. We can reveal them that way. <laughs> right, for like a transition or something sure. like that. Yes, we need um, more transitions. And you know what I will say? It is in terms of like, okay, so people who see the DTLT today intro, that their first thought is probably, wow, that's cool. And then if they saw something else that used it, because it is a fairly popular mm -hmm. right. thing according to that marketplace and the sales for that, and they might go, oh, he didn't make that whole thing. But for me, it was a good intro to getting started with After Effects. Well, and, and these, uh, I'm, I take it that any of these projects are, are modifiable, modifiable to any extent. Absolutely. You don't have to just keep the template in there and, and they're locked down yeah. or anything like that. And I think that's a good lesson for people yeah. is that you don't always have to start from scratch. If you were to fire up Photoshop and you get this blank space, a lot of times what you're going to make is not going to look good because you don't even know where to start and there's so right. many tools. Whereas when you can start with a template file and start adjusting things and go, okay, when I move this knob, this changes on the template. And when I do this, that happens. And then you can make that correlation. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, that's, see, now you got me all excited to go look for this stuff and start playing around with After, after Effects. And I don't come in at 7 in the morning like <laughs> you do. So I'm, 
I'm probably never going to get yeah. to this stuff. But, and you may uh, and you may need it like a real computer before you even get into any of this. Does After Effects run on the iPad? I, I don't think too? it does. I, I I tend to figure it needs a little bit more horsepower than what this has. So. Maybe not. So, well, I think we've covered it all. That's, That's been cool, another episode of DTLT today, and we'll be looking for it. I think we're out our big toe for the rest of the week, which is um, <laughs> get on in there. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Thanks come, for watching. Come back, big toe. <laughs>